Buenas tardes. Good afternoon, everyone. I begin by acknowledging the spirits of this place that is Washington, D.C., especially tonight with the Pope in town. And I also want to acknowledge all of our ancestors and the spirits that guide Excelencia in education to do the outstanding work that they do. As Sarita mentioned, I am a founding member of the board, and I am honored to have played a role in the early stages of Excelencia in realizing the dream and the vision that inspired Sarita and now also Deborah to go on and do this wonderful work. This morning, I heard the stories of struggle, of resistance that the students shared, and I recognized them as my own. I heard stories about growing up, not knowing about college or university. I grew up on the border in Laredo, Texas, where the odds of my achievement, even a high school diploma, were slim. As a, the oldest daughter of a working class family of 11 children, college was but a dream, much like the castle in the sky that illuminates John Cole's painting on exhibit here at the National Gallery. If you have a chance, go look at it. A dream that a young Chicanita with limited knowledge of the process or of what college entailed still aspired to and held on to as she went through high school and on to community college. What was the dream? To teach. But the reality of this situation hit me early on as I enrolled in night classes while working at Central Power and Light Company. I realized that no way could I leave my family destitute by leaving my job and going out of town for an education, especially after my father was disabled by arthritis and could no longer work. But despite the challenges, I was able to earn my bachelor's in education, major in political science and English, However, by then, I was older and I knew I did not want to spend the rest of my life, work, of my working life, excuse me, teaching children or young adults in a system that seemed to me to be designed to fail most of them. I remember, this was, remember now, this was the Viva La Raza days of the 60s and early 70s. I had seen guns pointed at me as a student for protesting had participated in my own share of marches and protests all over the country. I was a Marxist, sometimes a Buddhist. All along, I strongly felt we could change the world, but that I felt that my life mattered, that I could make this a better world for all of my 10 siblings and my parents, indeed for the entire extended family and beyond. Yes, it was a dream. After finishing my master's, and I won't go into all the details because I don't have a lot of time. I was about to return to teach at Laredo Community College, my alma mater, yet I was still toying with the idea of a law degree, perhaps a PhD. I chose the path that led to a PhD and never looked back, a PhD in English. Now I think we all know the challenges Latina and Latino students face. Listening to the panel this morning, I think we also know how to overcome the obstacles. We need to listen to the youth. They know the answers. I also want to discuss the triumphs. How do we get there? As a writer, I am often asked by aspiring writers what to do, how to go about being a writer. I have the answer for those who ask how to be a professor or how to be successful. And the answer for me has always been work and believe in yourself. <clears throat> Excuse me. I'm not denying that the obstacles are real, the racial profiling, see, the racism, the negative images of us in the media and in the school textbooks, the erasure of our history, the Alamo is a case in point, the erasure of our literature. My students are shocked to learn that Nezahualcoyol and Maquilcho Chilcin were writing poems before Columbus ever got here. Yes, the erasure of our very presence as indigenous and as Latinas and Latinos in the fabric of this country is very real. But I, for one, choose not to dwell on these. Instead, I keep working to change such erasure. In many ways, tonight's event is doing exactly that. By recognizing and celebrating programs that excel in Latino student success in higher education, this evening's event highlights the positive impact such programs have on our youth. So I celebrate our successes, our logros, nuestro abre caminos, aun cuando no hay camino. Aquellos who forge ahead and open the path for all of us. 
California's Juan Felipe Herrera has just been named the nation's first Latino poet laureate. Yes. This is a big deal, even for those of us who might not like poetry. But it recognizes the power of words, of poetry to change the world. His poetry is political. At his first public event, Juan Felipe chose to have Juan Diaz sing a collectively written corrido for Sandra Bland. If you recall, Bland died while in custody for a minor traffic violation in Waller County, Texas last summer. An indictment of sorts, yes, but also a memorial for a life that mattered. We are all connected, connected on all levels. When one of us succeeds, we all succeed. When one of us fails, we all fail. Yes, words have power. I'll give you another example of the power of art and of words. At the local level here in DC, a theater company, Arena Stage, for the first time has staged a play written by a Latina, Karen Zacarias, and directed by a Chicano, Jose Luis Valenzuela. And with all an all Latino cast, it is a telenovela comedy named Destiny of Desire. Those of you who live in the area, go see it. It's amazing. The social commentary educates and entertains, but also urges the audience to think and to act. Although Juan Felipe's appointment and the arena stage play move us forward, they are not enough. The erasure is deep and long lasting, but we can change that. When I first came to DC back in the 90s, it was a different world, a different country, a different community. I believe that change is good. It is the one constant we have. Things change. Be ready for it. I want to conclude with a poem I dedicated to my mother, who at 90 still lives in the house where she and my dad raised 11 children. A poem that speaks about change and about doing work that matters. My mother's hands, those hands, her hands, I know them well. My mother's hands, hands that wipe many a baby's bottom, hands that crochet booties and hats and blouses and scarves and afghans. Those hands that rolled out thousands of flour tortillas, empanadas, pie crust, tortillas de azúcar. Hands that lovingly caressed my father's face, that wiped a child's feverish forehead, that playfully patted a passing child's behind, yet never raised a chancla to hit a child. <laughs> Hands that massaged the colicky baby with olive oil. Hands that smacked a mosquito about to bite her baby, and equally adept shooed away a fly from landing on her face. Hands espulgando a grandchild in la tarde de verano, piojito, or espulgando a beloved pet looking for pulgas or garrapatas. These are my mother's hands, in youth deftly applying lipstick, now gently but obsessively nervously twitching, wrinkled and worn out, yet warm and loving. She holds out her hands, mira que vieja estoy, she exclaims, surprised by the wrinkled skin, the liver spots, the twitch. And then she expertly forms the cross with her thumb and her index finger, touches my forehead and blesses me. Que Diosito te bendiga. Like my mother's hands, I see the staff, the board, the founders of Excelencia, and all of those who have been recognized today, who diligently work protecting, ensuring Latino student success, amasando el futuro. Yes, needing the future. Remember, it matters not that we change the world. What matters is that we try. For in the act of trying, we are indeed changing the world, making a difference. I ask that we all do, as Chicana lesbian activist philosopher Gloria Ansaldúa urged us to do, do work that matters. Vale la pena. Muchas gracias. <laughs>